Hello everyone. So let's talk about five books that I found that take place in the country or province of Angola. I hope I'm saying that right. Angola. Um, so these are books I want to read. I've never read them before, but they sound like they would be good reads and some of them informative because there are some nonfiction books on this. Uh, but these are books that I want to, to, to read. I don't remember ever hearing of the country of Angola. So this is their flag. Okay. Um, it says that Angola is a Southern African nation whose varied terrain encompasses tropical Atlantic beaches and a, let's see, a labyrinthine system of rivers and sub-Saharan deserts, desert that extends across the border to uh, Nambia. The country's colonial history is reflected in its Portuguese influenced cuisine and its landmarks, including Fortaleza de Sao Miguel, a fortress built by the Portuguese in 1576 to defend the capital Luanda. Um, it says that their cap the capital is Luanda, as I said, uh, Angola. Their president, as of right now, I guess is J.O. Laur Sirenko? Sirencio? Um, this guy <laughs> is the president. So, uh, let's see. I don't know anything about anything there. Their population is 31.83 million. Um, on the continent of Africa, the currency is Angolian Kwanzaa. So there's a little history or geographical information for you if you were interested. If not, so sorry. But I was interested in that. So there's Angola. At least a little bit of information about Angola. Okay. Book number one is... Um, hmm. Okay. So book number one is Nzinga, Warrior Queen of Matam uh, Matamba, Angolia, Africa, 1595. This was written by Patricia C. McKissick. Now, this one is a middle grade, and it's, it's historical fiction. Now, when I look this up, there, it's, a, it's part of a series, but they're all standalones. So it's like a collection of books. Um, and it's called The Royal Diaries, and there's 20 books. So each book focuses on an important female figure and kind of, I guess fictionalizes their life a little bit, but that's that book. Um, so, uh, the, the person's name for this one, I don't know. Again, it's just a collection of books. So it's not really part of a series where this is the first, second, fifth, whatever book. So let's go ahead and get into a little bit of a description. So this one again, uh, Nzinga is obviously a girl because I think they're following all girls. In this one, I might be wrong. Anyway, uh, that's besides the point. We're talking about this book, not the series. So, okay. Oh, she has a brother. And since this is 1595, obviously her brother is the favorite child because he's male and she is not. She's female. So the brother is the favorite. However, um, Nzinga gets to act as kind of like a go-between. Um, her dad is an important figure and <laughs> they're trying to negotiate peace with the Portuguese. Um, so she is the go-between between her father and the Portuguese to try and negotiate and keep peace for the community and their area that they live um, in their country. So I think that sounds important and I think that'll be a good read. So It'll be easy, obviously, and a quick read because it's middle grade, but I think it'll be good. So number two is In the Name of the People, Angola's Forgotten Massacre. So this is going to be harder hitting. This is by Laura Pawson. So this follows the events of May 27th, 1977. It smells, there was a, states there was a small demonstration um, against the NPLA who happened to be the ruling party of Angola at that time. So anyway, during this, uh, so during this demonstration, there happened to be, unfortunately, a slaughter of thousands of people. 
So I think in this book, we're going to follow what led up to this, to this devastating event and then the aftermath and all of that. So it will be harder to read. Definitely need to be in the bright headspace, but it was obviously a big event. And I think sometimes it's important to know these big events so that if something were to happen similar in the future, which hopefully never ever, um, at least there'll be a little bit of understanding and maybe we'll think of some ways to help out. I don't know, but it's like the saying that I, I truly believe in. It's like, it's good to know the history and the past so that you can learn from it. You can evolve from it and not repeat the devastating events and make things better for the future. So that's, that's my belief. And so as hard as these things are, it's, I think it's good to be aware of what has happened to try and avoid these because even something like this, where there's a demonstration and a lot of people were killed, that can is not exclusive to that particular area in Angola. That can happen anywhere. So it's, I think it's good to know these things. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on because I don't want to get too deep <laughs> with things. Uh, number three is called The Angolan Clan, and this is by Christopher Lowry. Now, this is a historical fiction, and it's the first in a trilogy called um, the African Diamonds. Okay, so for this one, I really need to read the description on Goodreads because I just didn't know how to do a very short <laughs> summary of the synopsis. So I'm going to read at least part of this synopsis that's on Goodreads. So it says 1970, again, this is for, oh shoot, what did I do? Okay, so this is for the Angolan clan by Christopher Lowry. Okay. 1974 and 75, after the revolution of the Carnations, Portugal is transformed into a communist state. Capitalists are ruthlessly persecuted and the liberated Portuguese colony of Angola is thrust into the bloodiest civil wars in history. The fabled Angolan diamond mines are closed down, but not before a group of refugees escape with a hoard of precious gems. Their lives promise wealth and success, but a legacy of revenge and greed will eventually um, find them all with fatal consequences. Now we're up to 2008. It says, a millionaire businessman drowns in a swimming pool of his mansion in Mar Marbella. A wealthy Frenchman is killed while skiing in the Swiss Alps, and a Portuguese playboy and a, and a prostitute um, are found murdered together in a seedy New York apartment. The series of seemingly unconnected deaths sets two women, Jenny Bishop and young English widow, a young English widow and Angolian born Leticia de Costa on a terrifying journey into the past to revisit the Portuguese revolution and the Angolian civil war. Together they begin to unlock a 30 year old mystery that promises to change their lives forever. If they survive, the reveal of the truth or if they survive to reveal the truth. I think that sounds really interesting. Um, I like the books that a lot of the books that take place in the so-called present and then they have the past so that they're kind of figuring things out from the past and then coming to where the current main characters in their era that they live. I, I do really like that. And so I'm already intrigued just by that. And the book sounds really good. Um, it is fiction, so there is, um, it, based on truth, obviously, I would hope, but um, it's fiction. Okay, number four. This is a nonfiction book. So this is called The Angolan Girl by Telma Rocha. Uh, that says that this takes place in 1975. So uh, Rosa, Leo, and their children, they're kind of confined and trapped inside their home because there is a civil war raging outside. Um Obviously, they want to escape so they and, and leave the war-torn area. So things start to quiet down, and they start to think that the time to leave their home is, like, right now, while it's quiet. Um, so we're going to follow them as they try to do that while remaining safe um, and, and make their way to... It says that they wanted to rebuild their life in Canada. So we'll see if they make it. Hopefully, everyone makes it. Um, but so it's going to be following their life as they escape the war torn area and try to find peace and rebuild a new life in a completely new foreign area to them. Uh, so that is the Angolan girl. Okay. The last book I'm going to mention is called 
The Book of Chameleons, and this is by Jose Eduardo Agalusa. I probably said that wrong, and I'm sorry. This is fiction, and this is a magical realism. So <laughs> this one, you're basically following, or it talks about this man who has the ability to rebuild people's lives. So if you're tired of the life that you have, you can go to this man and he will build you a whole new lineage. You have new identification. You have a new name, just everything. Your past is completely rewritten and you're this new person. How that happens, I don't know, but basically the underlying thread is that people are not who they seem. Well, obviously, if this man can build you a whole new life and a new past, rebuild everything. Um, so yeah, I think that sounds really interesting. And how that happens, I don't know. And I am very intrigued with that. So the Book of Chameleons. So we'll see how that one is. But those are the five books that I want to read that take place mostly in Angolia. So another country I have not heard much about, and I hope to learn some more about Angolia, um, Angola, and maybe find some more books other than just those five that, that's there and learn some more and about Angola and the, Angola's history. I think that'll be really fun. So I'll list these books and the authors in the description box, as well as my social media platforms. So Goodreads, Instagram, Twitter, those types of things. Um, but that's going to be it for this video. So until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I will talk to you later.